Welcome to our third video. In this video, we will introduce you some key functions and parameters that might be useful to you. Imagine now we have a sample of students who are taking the same course. This is the study time and then this is the course grade. This is how an average student would do in this course. However, the average student hardly exists. Some students will probably spend less time on it, and some students may spend more time on it. And it is sometimes the case that students might spend more time on it, but the results are not really good. And then there are students who spend less time compared with their classmates, but they are achieving better grades than their classmates. The points are scattered around in the plot, and this scatter plot chart is the first key NCA function, ceiling line chart. You can see this function in Smart PLS4. If we add more data, the plot will have a remarkable empty space in the upper left corner. And this empty space is an indication for the necessary conditions. And this is what NCA is interested in. Here, this line on top of the data is called a ceiling line. Let's see more about this chart. This is a screenshot of the ceiling line chart from the Smart PLS4. The total zone here is called a scope, and the area without observation is called a ceiling zone. We have two ceiling lines here as well. They separate the area with observations from the area with observations. There are commonly two default ceiling lines. One is CFDH line. You can see that this is a stepwise line. Another is CRFDH line. This is a simple linear regression line through the data points. The CEFDH ceiling line is recommended for discrete data or when the pattern of the observations near the ceiling line is irregular. The CRFDH line is recommended for continuous data or when the patterns of the observations near the ceiling line is approximately linear. The equation for calculating the effect size is d equals ceiling zone divided by scope. The value d should be between 0 and 1. A common threshold is 0 0.1, and we want the value to be larger than that. Here you see that the ceiling line specifies the minimum level of x that is necessary to achieve a certain level of y. When the dependent variable here x has a level below 3, you can see that there is no observations of y that is above 4. So we can say that a minimum value of 3 for x is needed if we want a value of 4 for y. Here is the second key NCA function, the bottleneck table. This is the ceiling line chart, and this is basically a tabular visualization of the ceiling line function. The first column here represents dependent variable. It lists the percentage range for the outcome, which is a default visualization often used in the NCA. It expresses the value of y in percentage of their range. For example, 0 corresponds to the lowest observed value, and 100 is the highest observed value. This n indicates that the independent variable is not necessary for the level of the dependent variable. For instance, to achieve an outcome level of 50% for y, which is indicated by an actual value of 4, x needs to be at least a level of 3. Here you can see the same story in the ceiling line chart. Here the fourth column, the x in counts, focus on the number of cases or the observations that don't meet the necessary level of x to accomplish a certain level of y. And the fifth column, the percentile option, displays the percentage of cases that do not meet the, ne the necessary level of x to accomplish a certain level of y. In Smart PLS, for the combined use of NCA and PLS SEM, there are a few things to be noticed. First, structure equation modeling is a technique to test and evaluate multivariate, pre-assumed causal relationships. It is common to see models with latent variables having multiple indicators, like the cases here. But in Smart PLS 4, to test the necessities in the SEM context, an NCA needs to be performed on the obtained scores of the dependent and independent variables. To get these latent variable scores, we just need to click a few buttons in Smart PLS. We will come to this very soon. The second thing to be noticed is that 
NCA itself, also in the PLS SEM context, is a bivariate technique. If more than one necessary condition is analysis, then this is a multiple bivariate NCA. For example, here in this case, we are trying to analyze to test the necessity association between four conditions and one outcome. The necessity association found between one of the conditions and the outcome, for example, the ease of use between ease of use and the adoption intention does not depend on the other conditions. So you can add as many conditions here as you want, but they will not affect the necessity association between the ease of use and the adoption intention. The third thing to be noticed is that for each necessary condition analysis, we can only have one dependent variable. In our case here, we have two dependent variables. We can uh, evaluate them together in the PLS-SEM model. But for the NCA, we, these two NCA need to be performed individually. To evaluate the structure model relationships, here are some key parameters to check. For the PLS SEM results in the structure model, we follow the standard routines as outlined in the PLS SEM literature. First, we need to check the inner model for the collinearity issues using the VIPs. It should be below the defined critical level of 5. Second, we need to check the R square value of the dependent constructs. The acceptable level of R square actually depends on the specific research context of yours. Then we need to assess the model's predictive power by running the POS predict procedure. The derived Q value should be above zero, and POS SEM predictions root mean square error and mean absolute error should be smaller than those of the linear model benchmark for all the indicators of the dependent variables. In the end, we need to evaluate the significance and size of the structure model relationships and then to evaluate the structural model relationships from the necessity perspective, first we need to check the accuracy of the ceiling line. The ceiling line accuracy represents the number of observations that are either on or below the ceiling line, divided by a total number of observations, multiplied by 100. While the accuracy of the CEFDH ceiling line is per definition 100%, the accuracy of the other lines, for instance, the CRFDH line, can be less than 100%. The benchmark value 95% can help to assess the quality of the solution generated. And then we cannot forget the D value and P value. We need to make sure that they are correct. Okay, looks like we are all set. Let's bring everything to Smart PLS and then to play with it.